One thing I love about One Tree Hill, and I don't notice this about other shows, it just kind of goes right over my head, is the music in it. Oh, it's it's tremendous, especially on this program, because it's, it's a tone setter, it's a mood setter, it's a pace setter. Music means a lot to Mark and myself, and I think it means a lot to our audience. My fellow produce, executive producer Joe Davola and I are both frustrated musicians. If we could cut a deal with the gods, we'd be out on tour, on our own rock tour. Music is a big part of what we do on One Tree Hill. The music kicks you back to a moment, and I think that the producers are smart enough to realize that, and they take advantage of it. It's, it's a good tool. A song means so much to you when you're growing up. I mean, song means so much to me right now when you hear it and you hear the lyrics, and we feel like we like to put that stuff in the show because we feel we get that emotional core from the kids watching the show. That's just how music works. It captures our emotions, and um, I've watched a scene, and it's amazing how differently it will play to a different piece of music. You find the right song, and it gives you goosebumps. You find the wrong song, and it just sits there. If you've ever seen a TV show without music before, when it's being edited, it's boring as hell and music really changes a lot of it. When we sit down to edit the episodes, a lot of times I have scripted music into the into the episodes. I'll be listening to a record or I'll be listening to music and I'll start to feel that music and I'll think this is exactly what I want playing during, you know, Nathan and Haley's love scene. I think it's great when a TV show relies heavily on music to get its point across and to get the dramatic theme across or the comedic theme across. I think that's all well and good. But I think a lot of times shows do that uh, just for the cross-marketing, and it doesn't really connect. And I think when it's done well, it's, it's great. I listen to, I guess, what would be called a lot of underground artists. Um, and that helps because that's usually affordable for our show. And, um, and, it, and you know people find it hip or eclectic or relevant, and that's good too. I think it works because Joe Davola and Mark Schwann are such music fans, in an honest sense, not just trying to find music for their show. They love it, and they want to put it in there. In our fifth act, which we call the Coda Act, there's always a song that's in there, and usually it's played in its entirety, and it really sums up the episode, and those mean a lot to our audience. Those are great moments in the editing room, because seemingly three disparate scenes become the same emotion and the same tone, and the show really takes off in those moments. Haley, you owe it to your music. You owe it to yourself. Your dreams are a bus ride away. We started realizing, let's start putting more and more music in the show, because that's what we wanted to do. And we put it in Karen's Cafe. And we started feeling like, look, this is going to be phony to the kids. Yeah, Gavin DeGraw could stop by. Yeah, Cheryl Crow's car could break down if she wants a cup of coffee. But how many times can you do that where kids go, this is BS? So what was the perfect venue? Opening up a club. It got us out of Karen's Cafe. It got us a place that's better for a younger audience. And it got us a place where people can come up and play music and people weren't scratching their heads wondering why they were stopping by to play. Peyton was looking for something to do and she uh, she found it in Trick. She could promote her own night of music. Hey, you guys. Thanks a lot for coming out tonight to check out the Wreckers. We have a lot of great music coming your way. Haley could perform if she could overcome her stage fright. Don't think. Just play. They were also the, able to bring the Wreckers into the show. Hey, thanks, you guys. It's so great to be here. They were able to incorporate my music live into the show. Joy was able to sing more as Haley, so... I, I, you know, I, I dig it. I think it's a really cool thing. I had no idea that we would then put Joy Lenz and Tyler Hilton and Michelle Branch and Jessica Harp on tour together. I've been singing since I was really little, so that's always something that's been in part of you know what I do and who I am, but the circumstance of how it's all coming about is definitely new. I was sitting in the editing room one night after we had decided that Haley would get on the bus, and Joe Davola was with me, and I said, why don't we really do a tour? And he said, what are you talking about? And I said, if Haley's getting on the bus, why don't we really put her on the bus with Tyler and the Wreckers? I'd been on tour with Michelle Branch and Jessica Harp and Gavin McGraw last spring, so we all had kind of a rapport. But it was really cool to have Tyler there because we've been friends with Tyler we've known for a Tyler long time. For a while, so, so he's he, like our little brother. The great thing was that on the show, Haley leaves to go on tour. And that night we announced that we were going to have a real tour. So life imitated art, which was great. It's so cool that One Tree Hills decided to do this um, this tour. You know, it's the first one that a TV show has ever done. People keep asking, you know, like, what's it like to be on this tour? It's the first of its kind. Sure, the Partridge family probably toured back in the day, and you know, I'm sure it had been done in some scenario. But to have characters on the show have storylines, and then to mirror those storylines in real life by taking the tour out, that felt really fresh to me. It seems so organic. It just seemed to make sense. I do think the whole aspect of um, taking music from a show and 
and kind of blurring the lines between reality and what isn't reality, especially with the plot between Tyler Hilton and Bethany Joy Lenz on the show, um, is a very interesting and original idea, and I have a, I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to try to follow in its footsteps from now on. Releasing soundtracks is a no-brainer now. TV shows do it, uh, movies certainly do it. I just felt like we had the right pieces to take this to the next level. The only thing we needed was the crowd response. Would that work? We weren't sure. If kids would get that, you know, put the two together. Um, but they have, and they're coming out and they're digging it. The two audiences are basically the same, and it, it just makes sense, and it's a way for, for fans of the show to go out and connect and with the show and, and in a, a totally different way. So it works out for everyone. So it's it's a win-win situation. We sold out every night, which was excellent. You know, we sold out New York in like a week, LA in a couple of days. With the tour, we wanted to make it a total experience. So when we constructed the tour, we always knew we were gonna have a cast member in every city to host. And then to have the cast come out and announce it, um, it just, it's just such a cool idea. How do you like Tyler Hilton? I didn't hear a thing. How do you like Tyler Hilton? And every time the cast comes out and speaks to the audience, everybody loses their mind. When I step out on the stage, because my character, as you know, is one of the most despised and ridiculed and hated men on, uh, on television, um, I get a real kick out of the the venomous response. I think it's a great opportunity for the fans to be able to sort of reach out and touch the show a little bit, you know, to sort of have one of the actors from the show that plays a character that they feel something about, even if it's Paul Johansson and it's hate that they feel um, for Dan Scott because he plays the character so well. One time in, in Portland, some fan yelled out, he goes, Dan Scott sucks. And I went, yeah, yeah, I guess he kind of does, but he can still kick your ass. And then the crowd kind of cheered because you play into the character a little bit. But I'm an actor, it's my job, you know. And now it's their turn to go into our world. <laughs> and they look like they're having fun too. I think for Joe and I, we're thrilled that the audience has embraced the fact that this show has good music on it or music that they love. It's an important part of the show for us and I'm really thrilled that the fans think it's important too.